Thank you for joining me. My name is Nirav Mehta. I am Director of Product Management for Google Cloud Compute Engine. I'd like only 20 minutes of your time today. The first half, I want to share with you uh, some of our recent innovations, but also the core principles that drive them. And for the second half, I'll be uh, talking with Omer Hassan, who will join me from Apple Oven. Uh, he's the VP of Operations. I'm very excited to have him here for a short conversation. So let's get right to it and uh, you know, start with some of the investment themes and principles that drive us. First, Google Cloud Compute Engine is all about offering you thoughtful and intuitive choices. What this means is it's easy for you to select the right virtual machine type, the right storage type, simply by looking at how we've organized our choices by workloads or by use case. And I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Second, package solutions that allow you to very easily, in an opinionated way, deploy, uh, you know, for example, SAP HANA or VMware, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, we've thought through reference architectures and uh, common deployment templates to help you get to outcomes quickly. Third, and perhaps the most central uh, tenet that we have behind the uh, platform engineering is simplicity at scale. Uh, many customers I talk with tell me that Google Cloud is intuitive and as they use it more, they find it simpler uh, and that we make complex things seem simple. This is very important to us. We take it to heart and want to ensure we maintain this as we grow, add more features. Uh, so it's a commitment to maintain this advantage. And I'll talk about how we do it. Security is paramount, um, not only making sure that we offer all the right security controls and compliance controls, but also that we put privacy in the hands of the customer or in the control of you uh, who owns the data. A simple example of this is our recent feature for encrypting in-memory contents within a virtual machine. Uh, the encryption keys are controlled by the customer, and turning the feature on is a matter of simply checking one box. So simple security that's comprehensive with the customer remaining in control. And lastly, cost optimization in all its forms, not just offering the right price points, the right price performance points, but also helping you reduce waste, making machine learning-based recommendations that tell you what types you should be using, how you should be adjusting your spend. Uh, all of that comes together to make this a highly cost optimized platform. So let's talk about each of these, starting with VM families. With VM families, at the very highest level, there are two categories, workload optimized and general purpose. For workload optimized, there are three categories, compute optimized for high performance computing, and these are heavier on compute power, or memory optimized, or the M series of VMs. This is for the high-end databases like SAP HANA uh, with very uh, high configuration of RAM. And lastly, there is accelerator optimized, which is GPU enabled VMs for machine learning training inference. I'll talk about a couple of these soon. And looking at general purpose, we have, again, three different categories ranging from price optimized or cost optimized to uh, price performance optimized for scale out. Our cost optimized family is called the E series or the efficient series. If price per VM is, is, or price per core is the most important consideration, that's the one you would pick. If you want a balance and a feature set that works for the long tail of general purpose applications, you would go for the N series. And the newest addition to the VM family is the T-series or the Tau VMs. These are optimized with a lean feature set, eliminating waste uh, and, and offering only the right features for scale out digital native applications at a very attractive price point. Specifically, we tested our Tau VMs against competitive options from leading clouds and as you see here, we've achieved a price point that's 42% better in price performance than anything else from a leading cloud. This includes anything 
with an Intel, AMD, or ARM uh, processor. We are committed to all these CPU types, but what's interesting is with Tau VMs, we've achieved the, the leading price performance point with AMD VMs. That means your developers don't have to go port from an x86 application to ARM or uh, another type and still achieve this price performance. Tau VMs are in preview and we are open for registration now. An example of recent innovation for accelerator optimized VMs is our A2 VMs. These were the first VMs to introduce the NVIDIA A100 GPU. And I'm very proud uh, that we have delivered the largest single instance VM with up to 16 NVIDIA A100 GPUs among leading clouds so that you can bring your machine learning, training workloads, uh, achieve the scale and performance you need and grow with Google Cloud. Another thing that's new with virtual machines is our spot VMs. Spot VMs are a new and enhanced version of our preemptable VMs, uh, which uh, allow you to use our infrastructure when it is not being used by us so that you can get very attractive price points. What's interesting here is we guarantee 60% minimum savings, which we believe is uh, one of the most compelling price points in the market. Second, and more importantly, this pricing is predictable. Quite often for this type of VM, you will see in the market, the prices vary every five minutes. In our case, these virtual machines are uh, much more predictable in pricing. The variation is not more frequent than once a month. Third, Kubernetes engine also supports spot VMs, so you can take advantage of the price point from the Kubernetes clusters. And in doing so, uh, we have made sure that the preemption, when it does happen, is very graceful. And lastly, you can combine this price benefit with custom machine types. Custom machine types allow you to uh, pick the exact point for uh, the number of cores and memory so that you don't have any waste that is often caused by having predefined machine sizes. Moving on to block storage. Again, a simple set of choices. At the very left, you are optimized for cost. We call it the persistent disk efficient uh, category. The efficient category will be released next year. In the middle, as you try to seek a balance of price and performance, we have PD balanced. And then as you go to the right, you have the more performance intensive storage options, PD performance and PD extreme. Uh, for example, PD extreme would be used for the highest end SAP HANA databases, uh, delivering up to 1200K IOPS. So we talked about compute and storage. Let me address simplicity at scale with two features that were released though, you know, recently, and we are continuously enhancing those features with new capabilities. First is VM Manager. This is a suite of tools that allow you to do three things, patch management, config management, and inventory management for operating systems. Combined, Together, this allows very easy visibility into the posture of your operating system compliance. Quickly identify where you're out of compliance and then launch from the dashboard or in an automatable manner, the remediation to bring it back to compliance. This is very uh, important for managing VM fleets at scale. Uh, having this sort of burden and toil removed uh, by having it managed by the platform saves a lot of time and costly labor. Similar to VM management, we have this feature called managed instance groups. But in this case, instead of managing the VMs, you're actually managing a group of VMs as a composite application, which is much more intuitive. If this is what you want to do, you can achieve that with Google Cloud. For example, as shown here, we can uh, auto heal applications, so for example, some of the VMs in a group stop working, the rest of the VMs will take over the load, and when the VMs are healed, uh, they're put back into the group and they start managing the load with the rest of the group. Uh, we can also achieve auto-scaling, I'll talk about that, and uh, things like auto-updating. It's very important that uh, the managed instance groups are stateful, so you can deliver stateful applications, not just stateless applications. We support that. 
So let's talk about auto scaling. With uh, managed instance groups, you can scale up and scale down as needed. Most often, customers in the past have been using scheduled auto scaling. So if you're expecting a peak at 9 a.m., then a little bit in advance of that, schedule auto scaling, and then later in the day, uh, have an auto scale down. With, uh, with Google Cloud, you can do another thing in addition to scheduled auto scale. You can use machine learning to have the platform recommend or automatically scale up and scale down the managed instance groups based on past patterns of traffic. This is very useful when you're in a business where you don't quite know, uh, you know how your traffic might evolve over time. And so using machine learning at scale, we are able to drive auto scaling with managed instance groups. So in summary, I've covered a few of these core principles that drive us. Hopefully you see how our investments are really uh, you know, dri driven by uh, all the principles that I've shared here. Uh, over time, I hope to come back to you and share much more. And now I am very excited to have with me Omar Hassan, VP of Operations at AppLovin. AppLovin is a leading marketing platform that helps mobile app developers grow their applications. Omar, welcome and thank you for being with us. Glad to be here, Anira. So Omar, let's start with your um, migration to Google Cloud. You achieved one of the faster migrations, closing down several data centers and uh, coming over to Google Cloud in a very short time. Uh, I'd like to uh, have you tell us a little bit about how you went about it, what were some of the key tools, practices that you used uh, in achieving the speed of migration that you did? Yeah, sure. Um, our, our journey did start over a, on on-prem data centers and we found as our business continued to grow, um, they no longer could uh, scale with us. Um, and we looked to Google Cloud for that. Um, and we leverage tools like Google Cloud Interconnect um, to help with our migration initially. Um, and then tools like Terraform um, and Chef to uh, build up our, our infrastructure. Um, we, we found that Terraform was really simple with Google Cloud um, and leveraged a lot of the APIs underneath. Um, and we were able to build our uh, data centers really fast and efficiently. What was uh, the rough time frame? Uh, and, and you know, I think you did quite a few data centers within a few days. Yeah, sure. We built out our uh, infrastructure first on Google Cloud. And when it came to migration day, uh, we were confident enough uh, to do five data center migrations in a single day. Wow. Very good. I'm sure a lot of planning, but also a lot of skills, uh, thoughtful training that went into it. Uh, how did you go about guiding your teams mm -hmm. to, you know, to embrace a new concept because they were working with on-premise data centers? What were some of the observations there? Yeah, sure. Part of that was working with Google's PSO team, um, along with just reading a lot of documentation <laughs> um, and understanding the best practices of it. Um, from there, we started to automate uh, and build out our Terraform um, scripts and modules, and uh, it was easy from there. So the support for Terraform, having the right libraries was important to you. You found the Google support to be complete enough that you could you just be productive. With Terraform. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, the team was uh, the Google team was very responsive, yeah. and if we needed a new feature, it was built out within a week. Good, good to know. Uh, with respect to once you arrived on Google Cloud and how you scaled up, what benefits you saw? Can you can you start with maybe what were some of the first observations you had in, hey, this is working a lot better than it used to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the impact was immediate. Um, we, we saw that in our uh, KPIs internally. Uh, we saw latency drop by 25%. Um, we were just able to handle a lot more. We saw um, 
uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, a, a material impact to the business. What about SLAs? How how have your uh, SLAs to the business changed as a result of this move? Uh, we were able to tighten up our SLAs. Um, given that things were performing faster, um, we were scaled out more, um, and doing this all in the midst of a growing business. Um, you know, uh, I'm pretty proud to say that we were able to just do more and, and cheaper. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the, uh, network resilience the overall resilience of the platform, where did you see advantages in terms of eliminating single points of failure? Yeah, sure. Um, when we were on-prem, we would have uh, NAT-based load balancers. Mm -hmm. And we found that moving into to Google Cloud, we didn't quite need that anymore. And by eliminating that single point of failure and really a choke point, um, we felt more confident in our infrastructure um, and particularly in failover scenarios where traffic can increase by a lot um, or significantly, um, we, we had an ease of mind there. Great. Yeah. Uh, good to know. Uh, I think the collection of uh, different availability features come together to support your applications. And uh, knowing how you've used those features to deliver scale to your business is very useful to us. So it, it realizes uh, the promise of what we like to deliver. Uh, I want to also talk about things that you're doing that are above the raw virtual machine layer. Uh, tell us about any services you're using and higher order services in Google Cloud beyond virtual machines. Yeah, <laughs> sure. We're using Dataproc today. Um, what are you using that for? Uh, we're using that for our machine learning algorithms um, and be able to do that at scale. Um, in fact, it was actually one of the first services we used at Google. Um, and as we were growing and scaling our business and doing more uh, ML, we were we found that doing that on-prem would just be a CapEx feat. And it would be, uh, uh, you know, really take a long time to build. Um, and so when we, you know, saw data proc, it felt like a natural fit, um, and able to scale out and not only uh, scale out but also lower our SLAs and do that in a cost-efficient manner. Yeah, and a lot more elastic, I imagine, mm -hmm. because the nature of these workloads is they are they go up and down unpredictably. Yep. Correct. Um, so that's what you meant by capex and, mm -hmm. and not having to spend mm -hmm. on those peaks. <laughs> exactly. Um, makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I think um, as I reflect back, you've migrated almost the entire platform over to Google Cloud, achieved a, a larger regional footprint, better SLAs, better performance, cost savings. We couldn't ask for more. Thank you so much, Omar. That is an impressive journey. Uh, the speed with which you migrated over to Google Cloud, how you scaled, how you took advantage of all our principles to improve your resilience, offer better SLAs, better performance. These are all the things we love to see uh, in our customer. So thank you for taking the time to join me and, and sharing your experiences with the audience. Uh, to all of you out there, uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the time you took. Hopefully you uh, get a good glimpse of what drives our roadmaps and what we've delivered recently. I hope to come back and share much more with you over time. Uh, and uh, also bring more conversations with customers. Thank you.